He is one of the toughest human beings on the planet, and he is just, he is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And, and you seriously have to start putting him up there at GOAT status with, you know, whoever else you think is the GOAT. I want to fight for your chicken because this is number one easy fight in my division. There it is. There's the cat. I mold my opponents. He should be in a Michael should tackle. He's gonna break his arm. He's gonna break his arm. Then it's all over. Ten years amateur fighter. 18 undefeated from prime MMA fighter. But nobody gets me. Look what he did to Justin Gage. That's all you need to know. If you say Justin Gage is a nobody, you're crazy. You watch that Tony Ferguson fight? Justin Gage, he's a fucking animal. He's a savage. And he just closed that gap. And he ate a lot of leg kicks too, man. He ate a lot of leg kicks that would – I mean, I don't know how many of those you can eat from Justin. Right. Maybe he had like five or six more in the tank. Right. So you're on E. But he closed the gap and then wound up finishing with a triangle off of his back. It's 22 seconds from that till the finish. Mm -hmm. So 22 seconds, we're apart. 22 seconds later, you're unconscious. I mean, this is my question to you. Is that the best back take you've ever seen in MMA? You can maybe make the argument that Khabib lost two rounds his entire career. Mm -hmm. Maybe first round rather against Justin and maybe the third round with Conor. That's right. That's it. <laughs> Right now, would you see flawless victory after flawless victory? And either one of those didn't get cut, didn't get dropped, didn't get hurt. Right. To never get cut and to never get dropped. I don't think it's in a sport filled with, it's not a scientific measurement per se, right? Who gets cut the most or something, but in a sport built on unpredictability, yeah. on violence. Uh, you know, St. Pierre went to wrestling to get away from all of that in large, in large part, and then to never experience that is like, it is shocking beyond description. I don't shocking. Know. Brown strikes here, Herbie watching closely. The beat is trying to smash his face. George St. Pierre was the fastest learner, the hardest worker. Something. The sky's the limit here. George St. Pierre dominating every phase of the game, standing up and on the ground. He was looked at as the new 2.0 mixed martial arts fighter. In a lot of ways, he is the perfect fighting machine. He truly was a master martial artist across all disciplines. That is, without a doubt, the top contender at 170 pounds. I want that bell so bad. Get it to me. He won every fight. You want to talk about a dominating victory? In his rematch with Matt Serra, it was a one-sided affair. George St. Pierre is the undisputed welterweight champion. They love George St. Pierre. I need to twang up my glove for a little bit. Are you retiring right now? Is that what you're saying? I have, I have to go away for a little bit at least. Is this the end? Uh, you, I saw on the internet, thought that uh, Johnny clearly won the fight and you weren't, ha I don't know if happy was the right word, but you didn't agree with George's decision to walk away. Does anybody here think that Johnny Hendricks didn't win the fight? Meltzer thinks George won? Yeah. But what did you think it was? One, three, and five. Did you see George? Did you see George get smashed and hurt in the first round? It's about damage. This is a fight. It's whoever inflicts the most damage. You got hurt. You got wobbled. You got dropped. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. And listen, I'm a promoter. He's the biggest pay-per-view star on, on the planet for me, and I still don't think he won that fight. But uh, I saw George the went straight to the hospital, and Johnny's doing an interview. He'll be here in two minutes. George, did you 
Uh, see, did you think that the two judges that gave you the 548-47, was that a fair representation to you, or did you think you won more than three rounds? I, th I thought I, I won three rounds uh, out, uh, out of five. I thought the, the last round was the decisive one, and I, I, did, I, I left everything I had. Like I, I left it all in the octagon. Uh, people can say whatever they want. It's up to the judges, uh, but I, I, I give my best. <laughs> Middleweight to fight Michael Bisping. What a moment as George St. Pierre makes his return tonight. He wanted to come back and prove that he still had what it took to be a champion in the UFC. Oh! DSP Tom Bisping! It was great to see him come back and he's out, George he's out, St. Pierre! Get it done and become a two division champion and walk away with the highest of highs. He was always so hungry to improve to the point that he never settled. I'm sorry that all you could be fans out there. It's only GSP and could be at the top. 15 world titles to your guys four and you guys are really talking about who's the best fighter ever you forfeit your conversation once you decide to be a PED cheat you guys are joking right 15 to 4 are you guys kidding me the only person that could possibly come back and challenge my record for what I've done in the UFC is possibly George St. Pierre he would have to come back and win two championship fights to tie me. And I'm not even retired yet. I'm 33 years old. I got a whole nother chapter to go through. You guys are nuts. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys all have a great day. 15 world championships to four. And if all you guys are going with this, he's more dominant argument. The guy just recently started fighting elite level competition. Could you imagine me against the number 10th ranked guy? John, I'm just wondering, um, have you had a chance to communicate with DC at all? And if you haven't, what's your message to him? Um, what, what would you say to him? You know, I just want to talk about sorry. Talking about John Jones against against you, right? Yeah. This is the third time he did it. Three fights against or involving your name, he tested positive understanding for Tarina Ball is the fact that, you know, first of all, it's extremely rare. Um, and for a supplement company to have that in its product is extremely expensive. How does it make sense that maybe this was a tainted supplement? That that's what I don't understand. I've been in the USADA program for twelve years. I've never had these issues. If, if it was a mistake the first time, you've got to be more careful, especially with all the scrutiny that was on him coming back from a suspension. Right. You've got to be cautious and careful. So Daniel Cormier uh, is saying before the fight that I'll end up poking him in the eyes at some point. And the reason why he says that is because I do poke people in the eyes and it's very illegal. Uh, but I do it. I react to people trying to punch me in the face by usually uh, sticking my hand out and pushing their face away. Kind of like you see on TV where like the big brother's holding his little brother and the little brother can't hit him, right? Because his arms isn't like long enough or whatnot. And I do that in real fights. Like if someone's coming at me, I'll just put my hand on their forehead. And a lot of times they end up missing the punch that was intended for my face. And sometimes it lands in people's eyes. And uh, people hate that. They're like, Johnny, you're a very talented fighter. You don't need to use an illegal tactic to be successful. I try to tell people it's not intentional, but now I'm kind of known for it. And uh, it's working. <laughs> so Jill put his finger in his eyes. Dude, he's fighter in his face. <laughs> John, someone's got to sit here and tell you the truth, buddy. You got too many yes men around you. Well, I, I believe that I'm already the greatest fighter of all time. You know, my record speaks for itself. So.